Welcome back to part two of our character creation episode with the Protean City crew. Last time we got off to a good start with everyone's characters. Brandon is in the middle of creating a Janus named Calavera. James is creating a transform that looks like a humanoid car named Tommy Treadwell. Elsbeth is creating a delinquent named The Idealist who likes to tie things into knots. Amelia is creating a doomed named Phoenix whose fire constructs and memory manipulation powers may be the end of her. And I am creating an outsider named Mishra, a feline alien who is able to counter the combat abilities of anyone she fights. This episode we will be picking up right where we left off. Enjoy the show. All right. And now we got a couple more questions to answer, I believe, from both James and Amelia. Yeah, James, do you want to go into a little bit of your backstory questions? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I kind of blew past those <laughs> a little too quickly. Uh, I also wanted to say um, Tommy Treadwell is his real name. When he is being a superhero, he goes by Whip. Nice. Yeah, he does. And nice. Uh, before before being before being a car person, uh, he was uh, an average like teenage kid. Um, he was definitely a, a gearhead. He spent a lot of time uh, like working out of the schools. Uh, they have a cool like garage where the the like a shop class uh, where kids can learn how to take care of um, like learn how engines work, learn how machines work, uh, kind of like get down and dirty with different kinds of things and uh, and learn how to make things work um, machines wise. Um, and there was a, a terrible accident one day when he was underneath uh, a car uh, where um, some some like I'm gonna go with some unmarked chemicals that maybe the the teacher had brought in as uh, some he was the, let's just say the teacher was was um, subsidizing funds for the class by disposing of some toxic waste oh. uh, and and hadn't quite done that yet and so so Tommy was laying on the ground under a car um, and like there was just like this moment where the the toxic waste kind of like hit him and the the um the jack broke and the car dropped on him and he kind of like merged with the car and that was the first time he transformed into a car and he transformed back but it never quite got back to the, like the way that he was originally oh hmm. um so who outside the team uh, is uh, is helping me understand my new body um there is a senior uh who was a friend of his from before they used to work on cars together and so when he became a car he, he ran to this uh there's a senior student um let's call him charles i don't have a last name but charles um and so whenever he gets injured obviously he can't go to a doctor because he's a car so he's got to find a mechanic um and so his oh buddy God. his buddy charles um <laughs> Who knows about more about cars than he does? Uh, helps like uh, he probably has a hood somewhere on his stomach that pops open, uh, and they can help <laughs> like mess with his internals, which are just car-like enough uh, that they can. They, that's how he like. That's how he heals. But James, what happens if they have to go in through the trunk? Um, he can turn into a car, and that's not <laughs> as weird. As traumatized. There have been some, yeah, there have been some, uh, there, especially early on in the heroing and, and, and stuff, there were some awkward, awkward moments. <laughs> Oof. Man, being a teen is just tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're going through so many changes of tires and stuff. Um, into a car. Yeah, into a car. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't hide himself away because I think it's like not super comfortable for him to be in like car mode all the time. So he couldn't just like kind of live as a car. He'd have to come back to being this sort of like monstrous part car, part human form. Right. Um, and he like and, and obviously like he doesn't want to give up his friends. He doesn't want to give up um, like learning and and going to school. And I think he is starting to slowly le le learn to like the heroing part of it he didn't uh he w that wasn't something that he w sort of uh came to naturally but he does like feel very protective of his friends and so as they started to go out and be heroes um he would go with to either just transport them there but then as they would get in danger he'd do things to protect them um and then that also answers the last question of why does he care about the team because like they're his friends and if they're going to be in danger then he's going to put himself in danger and protect them nice Aw, sweet Tommy. Yeah. 
Uh, in fun fact, sees really well at night. Um, cannot see in fog at all, though. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh man! Does that mean we get oh, we get to ghost ride at some point? Yeah. Oh. Where where you're you're just driving as fast as you can, and we have to actually use your wheel. <laughs> Probably, because awesome. his eyes are headlights. Yeah. So that's so good. Yeah. I love everything that's about serious. that. <laughs> sweet, sweet Tommy. <laughs> what a nice boy. Um, So my first question is, when did you first learn of your doom? I think it was not all at once. I think I think it kind of started slowly, like her powers sort of manifest themselves. And she's like, this is really cool. It's really great. I like it. And then kind of everything goes back to normal. Um, And then the second, third, fourth time she tried to do that, it kind of um, things didn't go all the way back back to normal um so she can kind of like feel her body sort of dying for lack of a better word um or like kind of being used up and consumed as the more that she uses her power so there's kind of like this finite limit to the amount of energy um even though it's a lot of energy but there's an end point to it and it gets clearer and clearer as as she uses her powers more and more um, and so I think over time, she kind of figured out that, like, this is not a thing that you can do all the time. And there's a limit to how long this can last, as powerful as it is. Um, where did you get your sanctuary? I think, because I said I feel like it's kind of an old classroom. I think that there is, because she's kind of a nerd, there's probably a teacher that was like, oh, you can use this for whatever strange research you're doing for that, you know, college level paper that you're writing um in your 10th grade math class <laughs> um so I, I think that it was i imagine there's some redistricting going on and now there's this empty school building um and it's kind of a an empty classroom toward the back cool. of this empty like school um and the rest of the school is kind of creepy but we we keep this one classroom pretty nice so you have to like kind of climb over some fences and stuff to get there because you're not really supposed to be in there, but we, we make it work. A lot of asbestos. Yeah, <laughs> right. Just, yeah, it's fine. I'm going to die anyway. It's not a big deal. A little asbestos never hurt anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of asbestos hurts everybody. Right, right. That's her doom. You okay. didn't know? Asbestos. Yeah, it's my doom is actually the asbestos from my... <laughs> Oh no! It's the asbestos and the lead paint. You guys, we're all dying slowly. But until then, we're doing as um, best as we can. Oh no! Right, but I'm just being our best selves. Did he just make an asbestos joke? Yeah, yeah he did. He did. Uh, he did. Bad. Bad. Make it sound like James said that, editor James. <laughs> <laughs> um, why do you oppose your nemesis? I don't. We haven't really talked about who my nemesis is or how. Yeah. How I got my nemesis. You do have a question on the first sheet of do you have a nemesis? Yeah, so they are someone who is an epic, powerful, uh, probably adult enemy. Um, maybe not an adult enemy, but they represent and embody the doom that is slowly overtaking you. Um, and so they are kind of, um, they're a built-in like supervillain, basically, for the team, too, because they threaten you and people around you. And, uh, and, and, and the sort of the big important thing about that is that you have this question you have to ask at the end of every, every session where you ask, say, did you make a progress in defeating your nemesis? And if you answer yes, you mark potential. Um, but if you say no, then you have to mark your doom track, which pushes you closer to death. So you kind of have to have this driving, like every time you've, every time you play, you've got to be dealing with this nemesis there. So they're going to be showing up a lot. Does that have to be like an active, uh, I have to confront the nemesis directly or can it be like i'm researching things about my nemesis and about how to escape this thing the main thing is whether you made progress so if you are doing something that makes you more capable of defeating your nemesis then that's a yes so if you're just superheroing the answer is probably no but if you get something that's like oh this will be useful this new skill i have will be useful this new ally I have will be useful. This I just punched my nemesis in the mouth will be useful. Uh, to All of those I would be I was really yes. mean to him on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> you would not believe the gif I sent him. <laughs> Savage. But, it, but does, it is implied that they are a that the nemesis is like a, an, a, a real entity. Yes. That you have to deal yeah. with. It's not a, just a metaphorical concept. 
that contrasts pretty strongly with uh, The Brain, which is a uh, expansion playbook that it's more of an idea that you're dealing with. <laughs> or an AI. <laughs> or an AI. Or Ultron. <laughs> Sometimes it's Ultron. So I named my nemesis, because um, I can't come up with a name for myself, but I can name my nemesis. His name is William Calloway IV. Nice. Nice. Um, and yes, and he is president of a huge energy conglomerate. <laughs> nice. Um, and, you know, having uh, massive amounts of energy stored inside you as a person makes you a fantastic research subject. Oh, nice. Um, I like and it. <laughs> probably test subject. And we are not following good clinical practices for human research here. Um, this man does not believe in, <laughs> in the uh, uh, good clinical practices for how to conduct good clinical experiments practice on people you know catch and release <laughs> right exactly. oh my god <laughs> it's, it's totally how we do it um, brendan's already <laughs> thinking up voices for this character yes yes as soon as i didn't make him like subtly british i was a little sad it's i mean his name is william calloway the fourth yeah, how is he not british? i don't know how i missed that one <laughs> i'm sorry here let me fix it his name is sir william calloway oh, the mm. <laughs> he's like officially <laughs> british now yeah right yeah. Well, that that would uh, that would almost imply that he's like in the public eye a really good uh, philanthropic sort of person, uh, somebody that's. Oh yeah, yeah. I think his his company probably funds a lot of um, you know underprivileged youths. Um, oh man, oh man. <laughs> I, we need to tie these characters together. Hold up. One of my options for secret identity is intern. Oh, oh God! Yeah. Oh my God! Do you work for Sir William Calloway the Fourth Esquire? Yeah, I'm definitely not a dishwasher. I definitely have an internship at uh, the Calloway yes. Corp. Oh, that is amazing! Nice. Mm. Yeah, I got brought in. Um, I got brought in on an underprivileged sort of scholarship situation, and uh, I'm getting all of this wonderful training in the STEM fields, and uh, it's going to be fantastic. This is going to add some extra drama to our uh, team dynamic, guys. I'm excited about it. Oh, you are probably real good. sneaking me. If if it's like an energy company, you're probably sneaking me out like high octane gasoline. That because, good fuel. Because yeah, because Tommy only stuff. drinks f yeah, gas. He doesn't eat food anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he, he only oh, takes no. he only takes uh, that like ninety four super stuff. Oh. Yeah. So he's a very expensive date because yeah. when you go out, you have yeah, to get yeah. him like the you know six dollar fuel, and you're <laughs> eating you know one dollar McDonald's cheese fries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> worth it though for that bot <laughs> yeah that bot but that's that why you're like job. in your internship sneaking out fuel for me yeah <laughs> i'm sorry i totally interrupted i just had that moment of clarity um no that's really good because my next question is um who outside of the team is crucial to defeating your nemesis so i feel like there has to be somebody that you know then like like maybe like my direct mentor Mm -hmm. has like some pull at Callaway Corp or some like dirt on something that's going on there that can mm, that could be fun too yeah I think that's probably it there's somebody inside who's not too happy with what's going on at Callaway Corp nice and we can we can talk to fantastic sounds great so why does the team matter to you um because you guys are my ticket to figuring this out <laughs> Between um, between a cat with a spaceship and a dude who is a car. <laughs> and, like, doesn't seem so like, bad. You're seeing some stuff. <laughs> I've yeah, but there's like a lot of potential for some quality science here. So awesome. We can do some hardcore some hardcore sciencing. I'm gonna tie knots and all the things. That's all I have. <laughs> yeah, I don't know it. why you're here. You're here. You're here because you're the only person who knows how to like get into the school building where. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, is. yeah. I cut the hole in the fence um, that yeah. everybody goes through. Yeah. And then do you tie mm -hmm. it back up when you're when you're through, so it looks like it's back to normal again? I mean, <laughs> you you no, do I don't care that much, but I probably <laughs> tied the rope that gets us in the window. Oh, there you, you go. You guys definitely just ran into each other at the school because, like, you. Um, uh, Phoenix was there, uh, like doing some like after school research, and uh, I forget your character's name, Elspeth. I did too. Uh, Cordelia. 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 And, Delia. and and Cordelia was there, or Delia was there, uh, just like in a delink. It's a, it's an abandoned school, of course. The delinquents hanging out there. <laughs> I was tagging all the walls, yeah. and like 
it, you know, there's wires, I'm sure, hanging out of everything for you to tie knots in. So It's just the most satisfying thing to tie knots in things you're not supposed to. Or cut you things tried to, you're like, not supposed to. Take up knitting or something like that. I think that's just tying a lot of small knots. <laughs> yeah, but that's like so small scale, though. The Dude, mainstream. Like, you gotta, yeah, you gotta like wreck gotta, like, things. Think big. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking too small. The cafeteria sure. <laughs> has one of those like big sliding doors, like the big steel ones that opens up. Oh yeah, and that's how we get Tommy in. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yes. Does it have yeah, a freight for elevator for like getting you know furniture Probably and not. stuff upstairs? <laughs> he is human do. sized sometimes. Oh, that's true. That's true. He probably always weighs as much as a car, though. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> also, this is Protean High we're talking about. They have everything. Every, <laughs> every single elevator you get on just starts yelling at you. Yeah, he has to always use the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tommy. Weight capacity exceeded. Please exit the elevator. But like maybe they they do have like an auto shop there though that we yeah. can uh, we can utilize. <laughs> <laughs> I know my school had like an auto yeah. like an auto class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mine too. Fantastic. So is, is that all the questions then? Yeah, that is. So so now we can go around and do. Um, I know the the no, the doomed has a couple extra things because you should we should go back to your. Uh, you you have to choose some doom sign or a doom sign, um, make some doom choices, and uh, go over the sanctuary. And the rest of us have okay. some have to moves, moves to pick. Moves. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and then we can also maybe we can tie together the characters with the relationships, unless we're running low on time. Um, I can go over my moves real quick. Cool, because I I did already uh, think about them. Sure. Um, and so oh, I have to choose three. Uh, okay. Um, I'm ready so to, to go. If you're not. <laughs> I have to choose Same. three moves, um, and I chose unstoppable. When you smash your way through the scenery to get to or away from something, you roll plus danger. Um, and then on a hit, you the world breaks before you, and you get you get what you want. On a seven to nine, choose one, mark a condition, leave something behind, take something with you. On a miss, you smash through, but leave devastation in your in your wake, or wind up somewhere worse. The G, the GM's choice. So basically, when he turns into a car to run away or drive into something, uh, he's breaking a lot of stuff. Um, I also chose be the monster. So when he frightens or intimidates people in my monster, uh, with my monster's form, I roll plus freak and on a hit, they are thrown off. Um, and basically I can, I can try to frighten people, um, which is different than the normal, like, uh, social con conflicty type stuff. And then for my third, I'm going to say, uh, coming for you when you, uh, when I mark a condition, um, take plus one forward against the person you blame most for causing it so he feels very uh, uh i guess vindictive mm. yeah against the people who hurt him so that's really and cool. especially that teacher <laughs> who, who if he finds out was uh was smuggling in that that toxic waste uh he's gonna be real hey, mad was that toxic waste from callaway corp oh, oh i bet it was oh, yeah it, it totally be. was are we runaways style that we have like one enemy clearly defined for us <laughs> <laughs> i mean Absolutely. We currently have one enemy clearly defined for us. Oh, it checks out. Um, that, that, that makes me want to say that the reason I haven't been able to fix my crashed pod to contact home is because the, the communication system was broken up in entry into Earth's atmosphere, and this corporation has it. Nice. What an, oh, no. What an interesting little device. <laughs> Listen, though. Dude, I'm real good at stealing stuff. <laughs> Ooh, I, I sense a heist. Yeah. Um, so then the last of the decisions I have to make for this character before we get into um, relationships and stuff uh, is I'm going to put my extra plus one into Savior, which will kick it up to one. Very nice. Cool. I'm ready to go next if you'd like me to. Yeah, please. So I jumped the gun a little bit on the secret identity. Um, and I already said it. Uh, but uh, Iggy has a significant other. Uh, he has... Uh, a uh, grandmother that he cares that he cares for at home, and he has an internship at Callaway Corp. And so basically, when time passes, I roll plus my mundane to see how well I'm managing those obligations and whether so they're going to rear their ugly head. Um, I start with the move the mask, and I get to choose two others. I wear a mask to hide my real identity, and choose a label that I try to embody while I wear that mask. And the label that I try to embody is savior. I want to be a hero that saves people. I want to show up when people need me most. Uh, Once per session, I can affirm either of them to switch my mundane with my label. 
and when I reveal my secret identity to someone who didn't already know it, I mark potential. I also am taking uh, I'll Save You. You're willing to pay high cost to keep your loved one safe, reveal your secret identity to someone watching, or mark a condition to defend a loved one as if you rolled a 12+. Plus. And Game Face. When you commit to save someone or defeat a terrible enemy, mark a condition and take plus one ongoing to all roles in pursuit of that goal. Wow. At the end of any scene in which you didn't make progress towards that goal, mark a condition. Ooh. When you fulfill your goal, mark potential. Wow. Yeah, it's really That's a like... Good one. It's serious. It, it, that is when you say, okay, it's go time. We're dealing with this one thing. And uh, I'm a big fan of that. That's awesome. And uh, I think that is... Yeah, that that's the thing. Oh, I uh my plus one is gonna go into savior. I'm just bumping it up to a plus one to start out. Although I'll probably almost immediately affirm my secret identity and swap that with my plus three mundane. <laughs> that's awesome. I can go. Sure. Um so I get three. I chose Mary Contrary. When someone tries to pierce your mask, comfort or support you or provoke you, you can interfere. Roll plus superior. Um on a hit, you they take a negative two on their roll. On a 10 plus, you also take influence over them and clear a condition. <laughs> on a miss, they get 10 plus no matter what they rolled, and you mark a condition of their choice. Nice. So it's a risky move, but I think it really goes along with the, um, you know, the uh, emotional mm-hmm. thing where I can control people's emotions, but they also have a heavy effect on mine. Criminal mind, when you assess the situation, you can always ask one of the following questions, even on a myth. Um, what here is useful useful or valuable to me? How could I best infuriate or provoke a specific person? There's a blank. And what's the best way in or the best way past? So, um, yeah. And I wrote them down. Oh, are you watching closely? When you mislead, distract, or trick someone, roll plus superior. On a hit, they are fooled, at least for a moment. On a 10 plus, choose three. On a seven to nine, choose two. Um, basically, they're, um, they're opportunities. Um, you get an opportunity, you expose a weakness or flaw, you confuse them, or you avoid future entanglement. Uh, on a miss, you're hopelessly embroiled in it and under pressure, mark a condition. So there's lots of ways for me to mark conditions, but I feel like that's also the best way for this character to grow and change and develop a little bit. And I took my plus one on danger right now because that's how I think I see myself as of this young. Of course you did. <laughs> yes, of course I did. I'm going to lean into this hard. That's awesome. <laughs> It's going to change. I know it's going to change. So why not start how I feel? <laughs> I'm dangerous. I tie knots. <laughs> it's so scary. It's so scary. All right. So I got mine if. Uh... Yeah. Because why don't you go first? Because mine's a little oh, sure. bit different. So. Okay. So let's see. Looks like I only need to select three moves and add plus one to a label. So uh, the moves that I went with are the best of them. When you comfort or support someone by telling them how they exemplify the best parts of Earth, roll plus freak instead of plus mundane. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. And let's see. Uh, Not so different after all. When you talk about your home, roll plus freak. On a 10 plus, choose two. On a 7 to 9, choose one. During the conversation, I will... Confess a flaw of your home and add one team to the pool. Mislead them about your home. Take influence over them. Or describe the glories of your home. Clear condition. And on a miss, I inadvertently reveal more about myself than I planned, telling them a secret or vulnerability you haven't shared with Earthlings before now. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, excellent. And I get one more. Uh, The last one that I chose is Alien Tech. So (laughs) when I alter a human device with your alien technology, roll plus freak. On a hit, you create a device that you can do something impossible once with, and then it fizzles. When I roll a 10 plus, I can choose one. It works exceptionally well, or you get an additional use out of it. On a miss, the device works, but it has a completely unintended side effect that the GM will reveal when you use it. And I would be very afraid to miss with Brandon as my GM. (laughs) Oh no. That's great. What could go exactly. wrong? Exactly. I'm actually not a super mean GM, I think. 
I feel like that's a thing all GMs say, though. They're like, oh, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. (laughs) (laughs) And for my plus one, um, I decided to go plus one in danger because of her uh, combat mimicking abilities. Uh, She feels like she is pretty dangerous, but she's still, you know, young and still trying to get used to everything. And she knows that she'll shine more when she is older. Uh, but for now, she is uh, working her way up the danger scale. Fantastic. I like it. So uh, mine doesn't I don't really have like moves the same way everybody else does, I feel like. Yeah, the Doom is a little correct? bit different. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, me. <laughs> I haven't looked at anybody else's, but I don't have that box that you all have. Um, so I have, um, I have to pick two things that bring my Doom closer. Yep. Um, so I picked overexerting yourself. Good. And I picked facing danger alone. <laughs> Very good choices. <laughs> we're laughing because James chose the same ones, yeah, I think. You were mechanically making a character like who's identical good. to mine. <laughs> which is, oh, no. Which is, but, but with <laughs> very so different, different theming and everything. So yeah. it's great. That's what, I, that's what I get for never having listened to your show. It's a no, good, uh, like, it's a good example of how you can even choose the same things mechanically as somebody else and end up with a totally different character Mm -hmm. yeah completely different yeah the sense i'm getting from this is that a lot of it is in the flavoring yeah and um i'm I'm enjoying that part of it awesome um i mean just for anybody else interested the other choices were injuring innocence um frightening loved ones showing mercy or talking about it openly oh my god showing mercy <laughs> oh, showing mercy is rough that is you know what well so what i was actually looking i was looking at these a minute ago i was thinking one of the options is hunted ruthlessly so you could be like a vampire and showing mercy or talking about it openly would both be ways that you are revealed to be a vampire Oh, that's oh, I true. love that. So, like, you can do... That would be cool. Each of these playbooks can be so amazingly different in a hundred thousand different ways. You could choose body yeah. transmutation and vitality absorption and, and suck your... blood, turn into bats, and then superhuman strength. You can literally just be a werewolf. Be a and be a vampire. I mean, a vampire. <laughs> yeah. Or a oh werewolf, my God, I guess. That would be so cool. <laughs> Your next your Doom character, is James. Moon. Your, your nemesis is Van Helsing. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, that's so good. Okay, sorry. That was just a, no, a brief fine. aside about why this game is cool. So then you also no, I think that's super interesting. That like I had no clue that because I've never, full disclosure, listened to your show or like played masks or like looked at these playbooks really yeah. that much before. And so I'm fascinated by the fact that it's totally different from yeah what you're doing. Now I'm just sitting here like looking at the doom sign and going like, oh, is she gonna do it? Is she gonna one hundred percent? I don't think so. Oh, no. Now I feel like the pressure's on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got a one in five. Um, yeah, I know. Um, I picked Burning Bright. Oh. Very nice. That That's yet. a cool one. That's a really cool one. Okay, so now I have to know what what is yours. I chose, well, well, well. I chose Portals <laughs> to start now. with, but now I also have Dark Visions and Infinite Powers. <laughs> and Magic. Well, yeah. James is dying rapidly. <laughs> Um, oh, no. So, yeah, so... It's terrible. So, Burning Bright actually brings it in really nicely with the Sanctuary, because there's a couple little choices you have to make there as well. Um, yes. Because Burning Bright makes it so that when the GM gives you requirements to do to use the resources of your Sanctuary to achieve something, you get to ignore one of them, uh, if you mark a Doom Track. <laughs> uh, yes. And so, the Doom Track, the way it works is if you fill it, you get a new Doom Sign, which is one of those new cool moves. And then it starts over again. But once you've taken the five moves that are available, the only option left is your doom arrives, confront it, and perish. <laughs> not or. Yeah. I would like to point out, not or perish, yeah. just and. And perish. That and is perish. game over. Yep. Yes. That's, that's game over for you and possibly a terrible, Others. horrible thing for other people, too, because <laughs> your doom arriving might be Von Helsing arriving at your door just for you, or it might be Galactus coming. Yeah. So... It can be huge. So Sanctuary, you get to choose three awesome, nice things that your Sanctuary has. Hmm. So I was looking at these, like, blanks down at the bottom, too. So I missed the part where I have to, like, pick things up at the top because I didn't read the whole thing. I just skimmed. (laughs) The blank things at the bottom you don't need to worry about. That happens when the GM tells you stuff. Oh, I know. I was just looking at them because they were interesting. (laughs) Yeah, they're fun. More interesting than the stuff that I was supposed to be doing, obviously. (laughs) (laughs) Because they're immediate Um, consequences. Right. Um, let's see here. 
It sounded like a, a library of valuable tomes is possibly yeah. there. Yes. Ooh, yes. yes. I would agree with that. You also did some, say something about uh, computers being there, and there is a powerful computer on the list. I Yes, I do like that mm-hmm. one. We're going to pick that one. Um, and then, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> there's such cool stuff. Yeah, there is. I like that there's so some hard to choose. music. Like, there's just like, music. music, music and food. I like that, too. Well, it's, you know, like, for hanging out. Um, hmm. Yeah, I technically gave that to you as a freebie, James. <laughs> what? Well, I told you that there was corn fanta and oh yeah. Well, we oh, specifically yeah. said that there wasn't like a lot of food or that it wasn't like yeah. good food. That was That's where we true. drew the line. That's we true. had a conversation about that. Yeah. Okay. It was like protein packs or mm-hmm. like yeah like crackers. It was or what the fairies thought was food. was human food, <laughs> and they were very wrong. And that was the way we got around. I think I'm gonna go with healing equipment. Nice. Ooh. Um, because I, f- I think that that's probably what the, uh, chemistry set in the corner is for. Cool. 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 Um, I think that that's, we've been doing some experimenting, um, trying to slow this situation down Yeah, and not getting very far, but it's really great for everybody else. Yeah. We've got some, um, stim packs or yeah. whatever we want to call them. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get two downsides. Hmm. I think we can pick probably location known to many. Yeah. It's a school that people would know about. Yes. And then I, I feel like instead of saying easily damaged or tampered with, can we say already damaged? <laughs> but it's just not in great shape. I would allow that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think that's... That might so be... Two of them? Is that what I... Yeah, two of them. And then you just okay. choose a label that you add plus one to. Um, yes. And I am going to add plus one to superior. Fantastic. Excellent. For being a smarty pants. Very nice. Is that everybody? That is. Yes. Oh, now we're on to the when our team first came together question, right? Yes. Yep. Um, so the way that that works is there is a list that has an order of the way that the questions are asked. Yes. Um, and each of us brings something to it. Uh, and then we see how we were all brought together in this fight. So here's what I'm going to propose. The first question is supposed to be from the bowl, but you always have to ask it because that question is, we defeated a dangerous enemy. Who or what was it? Okay. Ryan, I know you've been listening to the podcast. (laughs) Are there any dangerous enemies you would have liked to have defeated? Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Technically, we should be deciding this as a group, but I feel like, like if you have an interest in that, I feel like that would be fun. Oh my gosh. Okay. So is, is this like the enemy that our team has defeated yeah the yeah. first time we yeah. came together we we beat somebody okay so i think for protean city it was like kraken jr kraken jr, jr. Yep. yeah kraken jr on the pier you know something you know lower level okay that brought us together wonderful oh i'm trying to think of uh hmm so i don't i don't think i want to choose any of the uh the miscreants okay no because we love them we now. do <laughs> Um, definitely don't want to go with Kraken Jr. either. Okay. Um. He's a Kraken. Yeah, Kra- Kraken's a little too, uh, <laughs> Kraken Sr. I don't know. Um, he's a little too powerful. <laughs> he's scary. Yeah. Oh. Every time we talk about Kraken Jr., I picture Bowser Jr. on that little <sighs> hover thing. <Yeah. laughs> like, that's all I can think of. What about, um, Mindshot? Sounds good. Yeah. Ooh. Perfect. That would be sweet. Okay, so just as a just to bring Amelia up Tell to speed on this, uh, Mindshot is she's uh, she is a villain that has the power of taking over people's minds briefly. Uh, so she like points finger guns at people and goes click boom, and then she controls their mind. Yeah, she is yeah. super super cool. <laughs> she's a she's a lot of fun. I like her yeah, a lot. Easily, okay, easily she's one of my purple favorites. lipstick and a cat suit. Yeah, yeah, one of my favorite villains so far. Um, do we have to say so, like how we defeated? Not yet, because that's in the questions. Oh. So we defeated a dangerous enemy. Who or what was it? We defeated Mindshot, uh, Outsider. You're the first one to go from our group. Okay. And do you have your question? Yes, there? I do. Uh, my Great. question is, we didn't trust each other at first, but that changed how and why. Hmm. And you get to answer that one. I know that means you had to do two questions in a row. That's but... perfectly fine. <laughs> um, okay, so, okay, well, I 
think before everything kind of went down, I was kind of um, in the shadows of society because I was uh, kind of wary and untrustworthy of people in general. And I want to say that this probably happened, um, you know, maybe a couple years ago or one to two years previous uh, that the the event that that changed everything for my character and and for the group, I guess. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. Let's see. I want to kind of say, would you four be like already kind of uh, on the trail of Mindshot maybe? And you just happened down the alley that I happened to be living in, being an alley cat at the time. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. It totally works. Oh. I was going to say, did someone we, introduce you? We were did chasing. you ever cross any paths? <laughs> <laughs> walk it walk under any ladders and really freak you're about people. to have some Aww. bad luck yeah oh that's your that is a good catchphrase <laughs> oh yes that's excellent <laughs> so i'm thinking you guys um are pretty new you're like oh you know we've got this person that's kind of uh you know messing with things and and she was i, I guess relatively young as a villain i'm not sure how long she's been around for she's in her young 20s i think okay so it'd be at the very least late teen i'm i'm like currently on this tightrope that i can't tell too much okay so (laughs) so she's young 20s ish that's fine um and you four were trying to track her down through the alleyway ran into me and I had to make a choice. I didn't trust you. You didn't know each other's, you know, abilities and everything. Y'all had your own baggage, but under circumstances, you came together and I chose to fight with you against Mindshot. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, you made a choice to trust us. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it... uh, stems from watching her you know use her abilities and seeing her actively controlling somebody like that is very distrustful so i decided to fight against that yeah yeah i think that makes sense and and maybe um maybe i was watching the fight for a bit assessing everybody's abilities as they were fighting and then i came in completely mimicking who's ever the the most like kick butt person in the group that would be me yeah yeah um and then i imagine also if in terms we... of physical fist fighting yeah. i mean oh yeah that's true yeah. yeah yeah and then if we are still like even if like if if this was supposed to be like how we all sort of start trusting each other if we were wearing wary of each other and saw this like you this person we didn't know come in and sort of start immediately start trusting us well then maybe that means like hey this outsider trusts us maybe we should trust each other a little more Ooh, i like that that's cool yeah i'm gonna write that down later <laughs> Who's next on the list? Up next after the outsiders, the Janus. Uh, So we saved the life of someone important, either to the city or to us. Who was it and why are they important? And I'm going to say, um, let me check something real quick. Uh, Amelia, B's doom is because like her mutation is going to get out of control and she's going to blow herself up, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Then in that case, we saved Dr. Rakesh Harshel. Who yeah, we did. Is a professor at Protean City University, um, that is doing a lot of work in muta in mutagenic suppression. Um, All right. And so they're important <laughs> to us because maybe that could be a lead. Although your powers are too much for his uh, for his devices currently, and he's important to the city because he's just kind of a bigwig name in the city. Brings a lot of prestige to your university. Absolutely. <laughs> uh. Up next is the delinquent. Hey, we totally broke some major rules to win the fight. What rules did we break and whose rules were they? So, um, oh boy, I'm going to go with uh, we broke Falcon's rules, um, which they've gotten more strict about 
who is allowed to be heroing um, since certain people are involved with Falcon and certain groups are not. And um, if you're just being like vigilantes, they kind of have to keep a, a hold on that because they can't have everybody being a hero or thinking they're a hero. That would be problematic. Um, so we broke their rules and we actually we stole a vehicle because uh, some of us were trying to keep up with um yeah, we can't all, you know, it's right. always I'm a two ride in whip. <laughs> so we were trying to keep up with whip who was like really taken over and a bunch of us piled in a car together. And, you know, I know how to uh, hotwire a car, obviously. So uh, we we stole a car <laughs> for our heroing. We it, it felt justified at the time. And I have this feeling that. Um, Mishra is like also really good with technology. So between the two of us, it really wasn't hard. And <laughs> we were being heroes, so it was fine. That's awesome. <laughs> Not our proudest moment, though. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty proud. It was a nice car. <laughs> Next up is the doomed. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, my question is, we paid a high, price, high cost for victory. What oh. was it? Mm. Our dead sixth member. Poor one out. No. <laughs> that, by the way, oh, no. is in an enormous amount of Masks games, and I think that that's really off-tone, so fight me. <laughs> that's like, that's, I mean, that's a real bummer. Yeah, it's a real bummer. Like, it totally changes the timber of the game, and the game isn't written mostly around that. Mm -hmm. So, like, the fact that it constantly I mean, comes up is rough. And I think that, like, as teenagers, like, you would not deal well with that. Like, that's yeah, that's some serious emotional trauma that, like, I'm not ready to explore because I think I have enough of that in real life that, like, I don't maybe need that over there. That's, I don't, like, I don't know how that can't be, like, the centerpiece of the entire game. Though. Yeah. Like, I. It, it's either I know, ignored or it becomes the centerpiece. That. So. I mean, I guess maybe, like, if that's the story that you want to yeah. tell, that's, you know, as long as everybody at the table is in agreement about that. I just think that that's kind of... Um, Definitely. Yeah, no, that's not what I'm looking for in in this kind yeah. of... Like, <laughs> in this kind like of game. That's yeah. a thing that's built into Headspace, but Headspace yeah. is a game that's designed to force you to deal with how terrible that is. Exactly. Right. And I think... Yeah, I mean, there's certainly lots of games that do those big dramatic elements really well i mean i'm not saying that this isn't one of them i just think that like this definitely has a much lighter tone yeah. to it um, you gotta work and, up to the horrible sadness yeah right yeah i have to fill several boxes before we can get there <laughs> <laughs> the high cost of victory 26 dollars yeah <laughs> 20. fell out of my, my coat pocket allowance for, for gas month. that's like two weeks allowance it's it's pretty rough um, <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to think of like how this, how this works for everybody. Um, and maybe you guys can help me sort this out, but I think that my shot's ability seems sort of similar to my own. And I think that I probably had to use that ability that I don't like to use to resolve this situation somehow. Okay. Um, but I don't know. And I feel like to, to me personally, that would be a really high cost. I don't know how that works for everybody, though. I don't know how to like. So maybe we left it not feeling like superheroes. Like maybe what we lost was our assumed moral high ground. And like, yes, like we all walked away feeling real skeevy. About yeah, like it. all of us come into this superhero thing going like we need to make some things up before we're even leveled out. Yeah, I'm OK with that. That checks out for me. Mm -hmm. Yep, that worked. Cool. Yeah, you guys good with that. All right. P poor mind shot everyone's going in her head <laughs> uh up next is the transformed and that will finish us out all right and so my question is uh we drew attention and ire from plenty during our fight uh but one person uh important person in particular hates and fears us and who is it and i want to say that there is a person um high up in the the regular like police force whose okay. job is specifically to manage like traffic control and like traffic uh, <laughs> violations and stuff like that. They are the ones who like set all the like the um, 
all the stop sign, the stop lights and stuff like that. And they're trying to manage like it's a city. So we're trying to like they're trying to manage uh, a peaceful flow of traffic through the city. And we as part of this fight, we like we hijacked a car. Um, Whip is, is himself a car. And so I am. We're a car. Yeah, I imagine that there they're like there was a part of this battle that became like it started in an alleyway, but it ended up being uh, a car chase. Or um, maybe it. It For included sure. a car chase through an alleyway. Or yeah, maybe it included a car chase <laughs> through an alleyway. And so I think we really like disrupted traffic and endangered some. And as part of the like, uh, not feeling like heroes, we probably endangered some pedestrians and stuff like that. Um, and I'm just. I'm now just picturing like this big splash page of us on like the George Washington Bridge style thing with oh, just like God. cars crashed and destroyed everywhere, <laughs> yeah. and it's just like facing off. And, like, just people all around just, like, looking at us as we, like, drop mine shot to the ground. Like, just, like, you know, like, uh, like, put her down after fighting her and are just, like, oh, look what we did. We yeah. stopped one person. We caused a hundred car crashes. Mm -hmm. Oops. Oops. Sorry. Nice. <laughs> I like it. That definitely sounds like something to be regretful for. Yeah. yeah. Mark guilty. <laughs> Okay, so last thing to do, and then I think I was we're... I say, does that guy have a name, that traffic guy that hates uh, us? I didn't yes. name him, but he will be named Officer... Um... Here, we can name him after my fifth grade dare officer. Yes. His name, um, Officer Kirschberger. Okay. What? Officer Kirschberger? Kirschberger. I love it. Mm -hmm. I like that. Kirschberger. Yep. K-I-R-S-C-H-B-U-R-G. Mm. Okay. So Perfect. now we now we go round robin through our. You know what? It's hard to do round robin online. Maybe we should just go and hit both of them. Yeah. Um, your relationships. Ooh. So these should be ideally they're people within the team. Uh, theoretically they don't have to be, but with a team of five people, you may as well make it within the team. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm ready to go first if people would like me oh, to. Please. Sure. Okay. I think that uh, you refused to tell. B, your secret identity when they asked. Uh, I think that she knows that Calavera has this intern has an internship uh, at at the place because it's important that she knows that. But mm -hmm. Calavera's not about to tell you who she is. So all you know is she has an internship, and you're probably looking for a female person in in terms of being at that company. <laughs> Uh, just on the completely wrong track. Yeah, exactly. You're you're, you're taking a, you maybe maybe you have a suspicion suspicion even of who it might be. That could be fun. Um, mm -hmm. and I think Tommy knew me before my civilian in for my civilian life first. Okay. So me and Tommy used to be buds before Tommy was a tr uh, was a car. <laughs> and I think maybe now things are a little awkward because Tommy's a car. Yeah. <laughs> and my grandma would not approve of me hanging out with a car. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, take no. the bus we take the subway <laughs> yeah i do not have a license oh and actually why don't i go ahead and hit my influence at the same time um you look up to your teammates they seem to have this superhero thing figured out give two of them influence over you and i'm gonna give influence to to b and to and to delia nice uh yay b because she has like all of this she has more power than me by like a lot and delia because as much as i do not like it i want to be cool and uh delia does some cool junk <laughs> cool junk nice cool i can go next um, you keep trying to impress someone with your antics. I think that's Mishra, nice. um, because I find her fascinating <laughs> and she is way smarter than me. She is as smart as I pretend to be or want to be. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to like pick up some stuff like, um, and like show off a little bit with hopes that she'll notice me, I guess, or think I'm worth anything on this pitiful planet. Um, and you and someone pulled an awesome stunt, even if it's illegal. And it was definitely whip in car form. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It so absolutely. Hoping. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sure that we have drag raced or um, broken into a drive-in movie or like um, 
gone exploring in a junkyard we weren't supposed to be in. Nice. Um, but Whip is my bro. Yeah. And I'll do my influence as well. Um, you care way more than you let on. Give three teammates influence over you. So it's definitely Mishra. I'm like totally <laughs> into uh, everything that she's doing. Um, Whip, because... He he knows too much. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, I have to walk, tread carefully. Ha ha ha. Um, oh no. I made a car pun. <laughs> or a um, tank pun. <laughs> oh, but his name is but Treadwell. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. that's what okay. I mean. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, we've gone through some stuff together. So if he were to like not be cool with me, I'd probably get in trouble. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm going to give the last one to B because I feel like she would know things I didn't want her to know. <laughs> Even like, it's just, it's not on purpose, but she's just way more aware of things than I am. And I think I'm a smooth criminal and she knows all my nonsense. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to give it to B. Because you're fronting and she doesn't have to. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I helped. <laughs> you did great. Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> cool. All right, I can go next. Cool. All right, you've been learning about Earth by spending time with Delia. So that's not good. <laughs> I know. Not, well, I should not. Uh, right way I to should learn. not be your example of humanity, bro. But every it's the only <laughs> choice, though. Yeah. Every outsider delinquent pairing is so good. <laughs> it's got to be. It's got to be. So, so basically, oh, I, I no. kind of see your your enthusiasm uh, for my culture and and my race and all of that sort of stuff, um, and I kind of reciprocate that with you. Like, oh, tell me more about humans. Oh, look, this cool little human cultural thing that you're teaching me. And it's like, uh, I don't, I don't really know the. And I'm like taking license, pla license plates off of people's cars, and you're like, tell me about this yep. culture. I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> I just don't write this down. But I, but I like spending time with you because we we have that sort of interaction, and it makes it, it makes it a lot of fun. Um, so I learn a lot cool. um, through you, even if uh, it's not the best advice. <laughs> but and now, possibly the most important relationship. Yes. <laughs> Tell me, tell me, tell you me. You have a crush on blank, but keep it under wraps. So, oh. so, um, hearing everybody's wonderful characters, I chose Beatrice. Yeah. Because, Ooh. um, she seems, She's she hot. seems to, yeah, that and, um, <laughs> <Get it>? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh fire. Oh, Lordy. She is a prime human yes, specimen. The, the, uh, <laughs> the puns are flying today. Um, no, plus her, her intellect is uh, just, like, really alluring to Mishra um, because, uh, you know, she she has this sort of advanced intellect from her alien race as well, and they kind of click on that uh, same wavelength. So she, she hardcore crushes on uh, Beatrice, but she dare not say that because uh, she's still a, a teenage girl that... Uh, has all these feelings and doesn't know if it would be reciprocated or not. So she keeps it bottled. Aww. Feelings, man. Those are, those are tough. <laughs> She's a feeling yep. feline. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for laughing, Brandon. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. I'm not happy about it. I know. Um, plus, a, a little twist on that I want to throw in there is maybe Mishra's kind of figured out along with Beatrice, that she is going down this doomed path, and she mm. worries that if she becomes fully attached and fully lets those feelings out, that she's going to get hurt so much more if it comes to that sort of ending. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm Oh, that's so tragic. Iggy's got a crush on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and influence. Um, no influence, yeah. I have to choose my demeanor. Either haughty or cheerful. Um, I'm gonna go cheerful. Um, because uh, haughty says you are, you think you're better than everybody, so nobody gets influence. Whereas cheerful, uh, you're thrilled to be here. Give everyone influence over you. Awesome. So I'm just uh, super cheerful all the time and super happy to be with the group and 
you know, that's that's why I absorb so much from Delia because I'm just happy that people are accepting me <laughs> and I'll accept whatever they tell me. Great. Who's up next? Stop signs with the white lines around them mean you don't have to stop. Yep. <laughs> this is optional. <laughs> Human <laughs> culture. <laughs> um, I can go next. Great. I am going to say I told Calavera about the, my doom and the danger that I'm nice. in. Since I know that you're interning at this organization. Yeah, and we're both all about death, so that's awesome. <laughs> um, Yes. Yeah, and you already look like a skeleton, so you just like it was really on theme, and it just felt right. And that's know? probably when I totally decided I can never tell her who I am. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that would make sense. You're like, no, this is yeah. absolutely the wrong choice. <laughs> oh, I forgot about this relationship. This might be the best relationship. <laughs> this coming up one. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, you would love to kiss someone before your doom comes. Yes. I am going to say... Delia. <gasps> <laughs> Ooh. Okay. I'm cool I, with that. I think that I like the idea that she just like doesn't care at all. Whereas I am like constantly obsessed with trying to figure things out and manage everything all the time. And so I'm like, I want to be like that. And it is sort of developed into feelings for you. If you are okay with that. Oh, uh, the nerd likes the bad kid. <laughs> That's true. It's the best story. It's, it's the it's the only obvious relationship here. <laughs> it's the best. That's amazing. And then uh quickly, your influence. Oh yes. Um, let's see here. I have to give influence to two teammates. These people matter for what you need to do. Dun dun dun. Um so I'm going to say Calavera, obviously. Ooh. Um, and I'm going to say Delia, too, since I apparently want to kiss you, and I feel like make poor decisions then, <laughs> probably. Maybe. That means we have influence over each other. That's precious. It's <laughs> <laughs> adorable. Guys, feelings are hard. <laughs> Teenagerdom is the roughest. Yep. Who's up next? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> so, my relationships are, um, someone conf uh, comforted me when I was at my lowest, and I think that I like that that is Delia, because I imagine a scene where um, Tommy is just, like, very upset, and he's just, like, hanging out probably in, like, a car graveyard, like, junkyard as a car, and Delia yeah. tried to, like, hotwire him, and he was like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> what the heck? Um, oh, no. What are no, you, you doing? You got a slick paint job. I wasn't going to leave you in the junkyard. And then we became friends and probably, like, ran. That was that was when we did the, like, uh, some kind of a, a street racing or something. Nice. Um, Celebratory ride. She's going to yeah. help you be your best car self. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think, so then I need to pick someone who knew me before I changed. And I know that we had said that Iggy and Tommy were friends, but I actually want to go with B. Great. Because I just want to add more connections. Yeah. Um, and I think that we probably knew each other uh, in school because if B was very like... Uh, into the sciences and Tommy was very into like engineering and that thing that we probably crossed paths and at least knew each other, even if we weren't close friends. I think we were probably lab partners. At probably. Some point. Yeah. Um, and then science fair. Yeah. Um, and for my influence, as much as I try not to care what people think, I can't shut everyone out. So I'm going to give influence to, to one teammate and that's going to be Iggy because like we did, we were really tight back in the day. And even if we aren't quite anymore, I still care what you think. Yeah, man, I got you. It's a good team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the team, too. That's everything? Yeah, that's Has done. everybody everybody's done so. their relationships? I believe so. Mm hmm Then we are done. Oh, that's awesome. We made nice. characters Give yourselves a round of applause. We did it. Yeah, three hours later, that's... that's <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! I know we were like, oh, masks will be quick. That'll be fine. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what's actually kind of funny with this is that normally the GM is instructed to ask a lot of questions. And we asked some questions, but not as many questions as I would ask if we weren't on a timer. So yeah. normally this could take even longer. Wow. Basically, it makes sense to do your first game of masks as a session yes. and have your entire first session be building the world, building your characters, building the relationships, and then go out from there. Especially because when you're doing the when we first came together, you are kind of essentially going through like a first round of combat. 
yeah. not actually doing the mechanics of combat, but you're describing the story of a fight. Yeah, we went through that pretty quickly, but that can take a much longer time. Yeah, well, and I think, you know, if we were um, about to start consistently playing these characters in a campaign kind of a thing, there are a lot of things that we would kind of flesh out a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and and maybe potentially we'll have to come back to <laughs> yeah. and figure out more later. Yeah. But I, I and I think because we also don't have a, anybody being a GM right now, although Brandon, you are <laughs> certainly filling that Slide role. Right so he can't help himself. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's, I struggle to not do so. <laughs> are you one of those eternal GM people? Uh, not quite eternal, but but up there. <laughs> we've got yeah. we've got a group that has a lot of occasional GMs, so that's wonderful because that mm-hmm. balances the stuff out. But I, I honestly. In a lot of ways, prefer GMing to playing. And there's lots of, like, people sometimes describe GMing as, like, this task or this thing that somebody has to do. But there are plenty of people that really enjoy GMing, and I really enjoy GMing. Yeah. No, and I, I mean, and it's certainly a role that needs to be filled, so I think that's fine if that's, yeah. you know. Unless you play gm whatever, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But that's a whole nother story. Right. Well, that's great. Um, thank you guys so much uh, for joining us for part one of our Masks character creation episode. Everybody, could we remind the listeners who you are again and where we can find you on social media? Uh, let's start with Brandon. Uh, hi, I'm Brandon. Uh, I can be found all over the place. Uh, my primary personal Twitter is at Dr. Captain Cobald. I am, should I say the stuff that I'm sharing with people as well? Please. <laughs> Okay, uh, I am also sharing with James mm-hmm. at Stop, Hack, and Roll, and sharing with James and Elizabeth and a couple <laughs> of other people at Protean City. Uh, I'm also on G+, and I'm trying to get more active there under Brandon Leon Gambetta, and you can find my game for sale on drivethrough.com uh, under Pasión de las Pasiones or through the Magpie website. And that is a demo version of the game. It isn't quite out yet, but we're looking at a Kickstarter in the near future. Not super near, super near, super near, but near future. Very nice. I'm so excited. We might have to uh, create some characters <laughs> for that. To come talk to us about Ooh, you it. You know I would yeah. love to do that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, it will oh, be steamy. I would sit and watch like so many telenovelas for <laughs> research. <laughs> be like, I have to do this now. It's, it's for research. It's for work. You know those relationship questions that I highlighted and went like, oh, these are amazing? It's basically that the whole way down. That's amazing. I would, yeah, I'd play the card. <laughs> I'd be all of that. Awesome. Okay, how about James? Uh, I am James Malloy, and you can find me at, at End the Meltdowns on Twitter and pretty much everywhere else. Um, and I'll also, so I share those Twitter accounts that, uh, Brandon mentioned. Um, but another place that you could, uh, that I will shout out that's sort of social media E is we run a discord for our two podcasts, hmm. which you can get to by at, uh, discord at stop, hack and uh, we'll bring you to the invite. And then we talk about masks. We talk about game design. We talk about our podcasts and a whole bunch of other stuff too. Yeah, and those both of those Twitter handles also have podcasts associated with them. <laughs> uh, Stop Hack and Roll or Protean City on wherever your podcatcher of choice is. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I have some games somewhere. If you look up, um, two weeks is a game. Uh, it's a game conglomerate. Uh, not conglomerate. Anthology. A game anthology on uh, Drive Through RPG that was uh, put together by Dan Enders. And the first of my uh, kind of strange teen dinosaur games is in there, if you're looking for that. That's amazing. It involves an actual paper craft uh, uh, T-Rex that you put together to use as a character oh, sheet. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. And Elspeth, how about yourself? Yeah, I'm Elspeth Denman, and I can be found on Twitter at the cat on the wall. Um, I also haunt the Discord. I'm perennially late. Um, but I do show up there sometimes. Um, and I run our Instagram for Protean City. So if you want to follow Protean City Comics on Instagram, that's a place too. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you everybody for being here. And thank you everybody for listening. Please join us on the next episode for our discussion block.
Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permissions from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero, remixed by Steve Combs, and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guest can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time.